Welcome to Professor Wright. You have a voice. Let's find it. And welcome back to Professor Wright. I am the professor, D.A. Adams. Glad to have you back here for video number 10. And of course, in video number 9, we covered how the first draft of whatever you write is always going to be the rough draft. Now we're going to move into the second part of writing that I want to cover, and that's having some kind of a writing ritual. Now, before we get into this, I want to give you just kind of a little bit of background. If any of you have ever played baseball or ever played basketball, you know that when you're going up to bat, for instance, you almost always have some kind of a ritual that you go through when you step into the batter's box. I'll use the example here of Nomar Garcia Parra. If you don't know who he is, Google him, go to YouTube, and find some videos of Nomar Garcia Parra getting into the batter's box. He had this unique ritual that he went through every single time he got up to bat. And it was pretty intricate, and you really need to see it to do it justice. He did that in order to focus and concentrate on what was about to happen. Because hitting a baseball is one of the hardest things to do in sports. That ball's coming at you at 95 to 100 miles an hour. And what you can actually make out of it looks like about the size of a dime. And you have about eight-tenths of a second to make up your mind whether or not you can swing and hit that pitch. You have to have focus and concentration to be able to do that. And a lot of baseball players will have some kind of a ritual that they use getting into the batter's box that helps them block out everything going on around them and focus just on the release point of the pitcher. Similar thing in basketball with shooting a free throw. Uh, Jeff Hornacek was one who had, uh, he had a ritual that he did every time, and almost every basketball player does, but he had a unique one of where he touched his face before every free throw that he would shoot to send a message to his wife and kids that he was thinking about them and loved them. He had that ritual that he did before every single free throw shot. Most basketball players do something similar. They'll spin the ball a certain number of times, bounce it a certain number of times before they take the shot for the exact same reason that baseball players do. It's to help them focus and concentrate on what they're about to do. Because when you're standing there about to shoot a free throw, there's a lot of pressure on you. Everybody's staring at you. You're the only person doing anything in the court at that moment. And so all eyes are on you. All attention is on you. And that puts a lot of pressure on your shoulders. So basketball players will have that little ritual that they go through where they can block out the crowd, block out the tension, and just focus on making that shot. Now, people who are rather quick to jump to snap judgments will often say that this is just being OCD. Hope your crap detector kicks in because a ritual is not OCD. A ritual involves repeatable steps that allow for focus and concentration on a complex task. The older I get, and, and the more I learn about writing and about life itself, the more I'm convinced that there's very little real difference between trying to hit a baseball, trying to hit a free throw, and sitting down to write something. They're just different forms of a very similar process, concentrating on a complex task to perform at your best level. Now, I'm gonna give you some examples of some simple rituals that you could maybe try that will help you to sit down, focus, and concentrate when it comes time to write. And then I'm gonna go through one, one example of a complex ritual just so you can see some of the steps that follow there. But let's start with the simple rituals. I've known people who their ritual was as simple as washing the dishes. That's all they did. They just, whatever time they were getting ready to write, they would get up, go over to the sink, wash whatever dishes were there, or if they had a dishwasher, load the dishwasher or unload it if they were already done. And that was their ritual. And during that time, they just allowed themselves to concentrate on what they were about to do. I've known other people who their ritual was as simple as just going and putting on a very specific pair of socks. They had one specific pair of socks that they liked to wear when they were writing, and that's what they went and put on and the act of putting those socks on let them know it was time to write. I've also known people who their ritual involves going for a walk for however long they take it, and while they're walking, they think about writing, they think about the project that they're working on, and then when they get done with their walk, they go in and sit down and start writing. I've known some people, their, their ritual was as simple as just sitting down and listening to their favorite song. And they don't even really think about anything while they're listening to the song. They just kind of let the music go through them, clear their head, and then when it's time, they sit down and start writing. A simple ritual is just a way for you to block out the world around you, to block out the, the dogs barking or the telephone ringing or cars going by on the road or whatever the distractions are that are around you. A simple ritual allows you to block those things out and focus on what's right in front of you, and that is putting words down on the page. Hopefully you've got good pre-writing, hopefully you've got notes, you know what you want to say. Now you've actually got to focus and get the words out, and having a good ritual 
helps you to concentrate on that task at hand. Now, let me give you an example of, of my ritual, which is a little more complex and involves a few more steps. And you don't have to do anything this complex. You don't have to do anything this elaborate. This is just one that I've evolved over the years, and it helps me. It helps me to pick up wherever I left off before and dive back in to what I'm working on. The first thing I'm going to do when I start my writing ritual is I'm going to check my email and any messages that I may have out there. I don't like thinking that there are messages waiting on me. I want to check them beforehand, make sure I don't have anything impressing to take care of, and get my inbox cleared out as much as I can. After that, I'm going to go over and fix a large glass of water. Now, I'm one of those people who I like to drink my water room temperature. Part of that is, especially when I'm writing, I don't want the cup sitting there having condensation on it and dripping all over my writing desk while I'm trying to work. I don't want to have that big mess there. I also just prefer how water tastes when it's room temperature, so it's a personal taste thing. My next step is I'm going to start my music playlist that I use exclusively for writing. And it's, I probably have, I don't know, five or six hundred songs on there. And it's just different songs that's set to a random shuffle. And I always start with the same song when I'm working on a specific project. Like, for instance, if I'm working on a book, I have one song that I start with for that book for the entire duration of it. After that book's complete, I can change and do a different song. But, but during that, that book that I'm working on, I like to stick with the same song for the beginning because, again, it helps me to concentrate. I know when I click play on that song, it is time to focus on writing. The next thing I do is I like to play free cell. And I typically will play 10 hands of free cell and use that time while I'm, while I'm playing free cell. I will use that time to concentrate on where I was in whatever it is I'm writing. If, I'm, if I've finished a chapter, then I'm thinking about, okay, where am I starting in the next chapter? If I'm in the middle of a scene, then I'm thinking about, okay, what's already happened up to this point? What do I need to pick up with? And while I'm playing those hands of free cell, I'm thinking about what's going to be happening as soon as I start writing. And an amazing thing happens for me. As soon as I get done playing that tenth game of free cell, and I open up my word processor and get to wherever it was I left off, without fail, I start writing. Because I have blocked out everything negative, and I have concentrated on what I have to do and get those words down on the page. This is a very powerful thing. Because writer's block is terrible. If you've ever suffered from it, you know, sitting and staring at a computer screen or staring at a piece of paper and trying to come up with something to say is a daunting task. But my ritual allows me to kind of push all that to the side, know what I want to say, concentrate in on it, and just start typing as soon as I get to that point. And it works without fail. I have yet to have my ritual let me down. And most of the people I know who do some kind of a ritual will say a very similar thing, that their ritual helps them to get started. Now, there are two major keys that you need to follow for doing a good writing ritual. Number one, you need to write as much as you can at the same time every time you sit down to write. Same time of day, I mean. You don't have to be within a minute or so. You can be within a couple of hours but the same time of day. And you need to find the time of day that is most productive for you. For some people, that's going to be early in the morning. Some people are afternoon people. Some people are night people. Find the time that works best for you, whatever it is. And whenever you have something to do writing-wise, try to write it in that time. The second big key is to always try to write in the same place. Now, I know for some of you, this is not always feasible. Some of you, if you're students, you, know, you, you may have to write in the library where you can. You may have to write in the student center where you can. It's not always possible for you to have the exact same place. But if you are in a position to do it, if you're in a position to have a little corner of your room or a little corner of a, of a dining room marked off to where that is your writing space, then do so. And use that space every single time. And it needs to be a place where you feel very comfortable so that when you sit down to write, you know this is my space, nobody's going to bother me, and I'm going to be able to concentrate and focus while I'm here. Let me make this point for those of you who maybe have families that are, that are always wanting to engage with you, wanting to either talk to you, or, or if you have children who are always trying to get you to do something for them, because you know, I'm a father too and I understand kids are always, you know, they, have, they, they like attention and they, and they like for you to do things for them. And they will come up and ask you in the middle of anything, hey, you know, will you please fix me a glass of milk, whatever, whatever the question they have is. You have to, if you want to write and you want to be serious about writing, you have to make it known 
that when you sit down to concentrate on whatever it is, everyone needs to leave you alone during that time. So if you can have somebody else to watch the kids for you during that time, that's very important. But everybody in your household, whoever it is, roommates, family, children, whoever is in that household with you, they need to respect that that time and that place belongs to you and that you need to have the opportunity to sit down and do what you need to do during that writing block. Whatever, however much time you set aside for that, 30 minutes, an hour, whatever it is you set aside, everyone in the household needs to respect that that is your time and your time alone. I recommend for those of you who do have younger children, if you're serious about wanting to try to write, I highly recommend wait until they go to sleep. You'll save yourself a heck of a lot of grief if you do that. So those are the two big keys. Always try to write at the same time and always try to write in the same place. And if you'll do those two things, eventually what happens is you trick your brain into, as you start moving towards that space at that time, your brain starts to think, oh, it's time to write. And your brain automatically starts to block out everything else and concentrate on your writing task at hand. Having a good ritual is a very helpful tool that if you do it, I think you will see a lot of great rewards from it. Okay, so now that brings us up to fish cabinet number six. In two to three well-developed paragraphs, please describe some ritual you know you already follow, whether it pertains to playing sports, washing your hair, or writing. Doesn't matter what the ritual is, just in two to three paragraphs, please describe that ritual to me. I want to know what kind of ritual do you follow and how do you find it helpful for yourself. Okay, so that brings us to the end of video number 10 and also the end of the writing stage of the writing process. When we come back for video 11, we're going to get into rewriting, which is the most important stage of the entire process. So please join us for video number 11. Thank you for joining us this time. I am the professor, D.A. Adams, and I'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.